Hey, it's Jeff with IT Supplies, and lately it's hard to walk a trade show or read a printing article without hearing or seeing something about direct-to-film transfer. In this video, Andy and I are going to lift our sleeves up and explore the process of printing direct-to-film using Epson direct-to-garment printers. Yeah, we're going to walk you through the process, so from image to software to print, prepping and finishing. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of how to use your Epson DTG to produce finished goods using direct-to-film transfers. All right, our setup here in the demo center has both the Epson F2100 and the Epson F3070. Both of these printers are capable of printing DTF film, but for today's video, we're going to use the Epson F2100. So, Here's what you're going to need in order to use your Epson DTG printer. You're going to need the printer. You're going to need the standard DTG inks that you use for your printer now. You're going to need Garment Creator, the driver that Epson includes with your printer, or you're going to need a third-party software like CADLINK, which may give you a more efficient workflow. You'll need some DTF film, some DTF adhesive powder, and a heat press. If you have a conveyor dryer, you can also use that for part of this process. So what is the process? Today we're going to show you from beginning to end how we're doing our DTF transfers. There is some variability based on environmental conditions like humidity and temperatures. There's also some differences in films and powders. But what we're showing today is a process we've used across several different types of films and powders that has given us the best results. Yeah, so the first step is to prep the file for printing. We'll use Epson's Garment Creator software to print our image. As you're printing your file, remember that we are printing to a film which is then going to be married up to your garment and peeled away, leaving just the ink behind. For this reason, we need to think about this process in reverse of the typical DTG process. This begins by first mirroring our image. After that, you're going to lay down your CMYK inks. We did this by creating a new print mode with characteristics that we found worked best on film. Go ahead and pause this video here and take a look at the settings that we've used for the CMYK layer. All right, next, we're going to put our film onto the printer's platen and print the CMYK layer. We want to secure the film with the tape so that the airflow from the moving printhead doesn't slide the film on the platen. We're now going to send this file to print. During this CMYK print, you want to make sure that your ink is laying crisply on the film and not pooling or spreading. If it is, then you need to reduce your ink. Now we're going to go back into Garment Creator and send the white layer. We want to keep the file in the exact same place and change to our white DTF mode that we've created. Note that Garment Creator does not allow a mode that only prints white ink, so this is going to require some manual intervention. Go ahead and pause this video again and take note of our settings. When we send this file to print through Garment Creator, it thinks we are printing to a garment. So it's going to first print the white underbase and then print the CMYK over the top. But because we're printing to film and have already printed our own CMYK layer, we're going to manually cancel the print job after the white layer is printed. This is a little extra work and third-party rips like CADLINK have created film modes that can send CMYK and then white ink in a single set. We've also heard that Epson is working on a garment creator update that would allow for a film transfer mode. Now that you've printed your transfer, it's time to apply your adhesive. The DTF adhesives that we use come in powder forms. This powder has a warning label that would make Johnny Knoxville pause and proceed with caution. So we want to emphasize how do you safely use this powder. Please be sure to wear a mask and avoid inhaling the powder. And wear gloves to avoid having it come in contact with skin. Basically, you want to dress like you're going to the grocery store and you know everyone else has COVID. When you apply the powder, you want to liberally sprinkle it over the top of the print. Because the ink is still wet, the powder will stick to the ink. The portions of the film that don't have ink won't attract any powder. Pass the powder back and forth over the print until you're sure that all of the ink has been covered with adhesive powder. You want to do this in a clean trough or box so that the excess powder is contained. Any powder that doesn't stick to the ink can be used for future prints. So make sure you collect and reuse it. Okay, after the powder adhesive is applied, we now need to hot melt it to the back of the ink. This sets the adhesive and bonds it to the ink layer. We're going to do this by hovering our heat press over the film for three minutes at 350 degrees. Make sure that you are hovering the heat press and not clamping it. 
The film should not have any direct contact with the press at this step. After three minutes, you'll notice that the adhesive is no longer a gritty, sandy texture, but that it is now a rubbery texture, almost like an old school rubber glove your mom would use to wash the dishes. Now this is the step that you could substitute the use of a conveyor dryer in place of the heat press. Make sure that you turn off any air blowers inside your conveyor. You don't want your film or adhesive powder blowing around. You'll need to play around with the times and temps to make sure the adhesive sets correctly. So now that you have your film printed and your adhesive bonded, you're ready to use your film. The nice thing about DTF is that you don't need to use your film immediately. Once you've set your ink and adhesive, you can safely inventory and store your film print until you need it. You don't need to know the type or color of the garment that it's going to eventually receive the transfer, giving you a lot of flexibility for printing ahead and keeping film prints on hand. And once you are ready to transfer your printed film, you'll need to make sure your heat press is turned up to max pressure. You really want to smash this film down into the garment to make sure the adhesive bonds. Set your heat press for 350 degrees and use a protective tissue. Clamp it down for 10 to 15 seconds. After you're done pressing, let your garment cool for 60 seconds. After 60 seconds, try peeling up the film to see if the ink layer is cleanly left behind on the garment. If the ink isn't releasing cleanly, then stop and put, back, put it back into the press for another 10 seconds. When you try peeling the film a second time, try from a different corner of the film. See if it'll peel up. It should peel up cleanly this time. After you remove the film, you'll see that beautiful DTF print with crisp lines and vibrant colors that aren't possible with DTG. You'll be tempted to stop after this step, but there is one more thing that we recommend doing. After removing the film, use another sheet of protective tissue and press the image for another five seconds. This last step helps with washability and rub resistance. And that's it. So why would someone want to do this? Well, first, Hopefully the camera can pick up the amazing image quality you can get by printing to a smooth ink receptive surface like a film versus directly printing to a textured and porous surface like a garment. Second, you can print to any number of different substrates that you can't do with DTG. This includes polyester shirts like this one that we've printed, but also hats, shoes, wood, backpacks, drinkware, and many more. Third, the DTF lets you place images on garments where zippers, pockets, and other accessories make DTG printing unfeasible. And fourth, you can print your images and designs to films and easily inventory them for future use across all different garment and substrate types. This allows you to profile and set up a single print workflow for film and not a million workflows for a million garments in a million different colors. So, if direct-to-film printing sounds like something you want to try, we'd love to help you get started. We sell different films and adhesives and can help you find the right product for your needs. Our team is on hand to take your call and walk you through the process. If you'd like to test your ideas hands-on, we'd love to have you out to our Chicagoland Demo Center to glove up, mask up, and get printing. Thanks for watching our video. For more content like this, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks.